Welcome to Downshift, everyone. My name is Paulo. And my name is Matt, and we've spent the week with the newly refreshed 2024 Ford F-150, and we've also spent some time recently in the newly updated Ram 1500. And today we're covering the best and the rest and see how they stack up against each other. Really the only thing we consider a con of this truck isn't even relative to the other trucks in the segment, it's just relative to itself. Last year it technically did offer more towing and more payload. New towing figure maxes out at 13,500 pounds. That's a full ton more than you're still going to get in the Ram and it's going to be more than you get in the Silverado. We also have a new tailgate which we'll talk more about later, it's kind of like a swing gate. but when you do drop the tailgate and look at the bed. Here we have the five and a half foot bed. You can get a six and a half. You can get an eight foot bed option, but your payload is also a little bit lower than it was last year, about 2,445 pounds of max payload. That's still gonna be more than the Silverado and the Ram, but technically less than it was last year. Now we're looking here at our spray in bed liner. This is our tough bed. It's about $600 option. We've got a hard tonneau cover up top. This is about a $1,200 option. This has the bed utility package as well. So you've got clamps, you've got the ruler, you've got bottle openers, and you have the old tried and true way to get into the bed. Now, if you do get the new swing out tailgate, there will be a different or revised bed step. But here with the bed utility package and the conventional bed, it still works pretty well. And it's powered up, up and down. So it's hard to call this a con, but I guess against itself, technically it is from last year. Now, one of the best things about the F-150 is the price slash value proposition that you get here. Now, you can get into an F-150 for 2024 with the facelift and all the improvements that they've brought for $37,000. If you want to go up to the platinum trim like we have here, it's going to run you about $74,000 to start. This one is op optioned all the way up to $90,000, but there's a $2,000 savings for the hybrid built in. So it's tested about $88,000. It's a lot of money for a truck, but as starting, this is gonna be cheaper than a Ram. The silver, it's also gonna be cheaper than a Silverado, but the Silverado will cost a little bit less on the top end. So I think there's bringing a lot of value and a lot of truck for the money here in the F-150. Then we're gonna talk about engines because they've cleaned things up a little bit and I'm driving probably one of my favorite engine options. Uh, now let's cover what they've done so far. They've cleaned things up and streamlined the powertrain options. The base V6, is dead, doesn't exist anymore. Also, just a weird side note, the Lightning doesn't receive an update for 2024. A little bit weird, but I expect that to get updated in the next year or two with kind of the lapse of interest in that truck. But anyway, the 2.7 EcoBoost V6 is now the standard engine for the F-150. You can still get the Coyote 5 liter V8 for now. That's awesome. And then we start to get into the 3.5 EcoBoost motors. Now there's three options. There's the base 3.5 EcoBoost, the V6, which is just kind of, that's what it is, uh, lower output. And then you've got this. This is 3.5 EcoBoost twin turbo V6 with the hybrid system. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. And then you can go to the high output 3.5 EcoBoost. That's the Raptor engine. That is one of my favorites, to be honest. And then of course, there's still the Raptor R, which actually gets more power this year. Supercharged V8, insane power, insane sounds, just insane experience overall. So you still have plenty of choices. But then there's the hybrid. Let's talk more specifically about the hybrid. The production here, Ford has doubled of the hybrid because the take rate has kind of exploded in the last year or two. And what they're doing now is they've doubled that production, they've streamlined it, and now they are able to produce it more efficiently and more cost effectively, which means you can now get this hybrid powertrain for the same money as the base, almost two grand. It'll save you two grand on the MSRP. Now on the window sticker, it'll show you that, that price. So this truck is optioned out to $90,000, but I've got a minus $2,000 for having the hybrid. So we're testing it like $88,000, which is pretty cool. You can get the hybrid from the XLT grade all the way up to the Platinum Plus. That's the top of the range now. Uh, they've renamed some things up there, but 430 horsepower, 570 pound feet of torque. That is the most powerful non-Raptor F-150 that you can get. That's pretty awesome. And it's also gonna be the most efficient, 23 MPG combined. And yes, it'll drive in fully electric mode. Uh, today, I've been tracking my driving today. We've done 15.8 miles of total driving. Seven of that, almost half, has been fully electric. Now it's all been side streets, no highway, but still, that's amazing. Really, really impressive to have. And when you couple that with the fact that with a full tank of fuel, this thing was dropped off and showing like almost 640 miles of range. With the Pro Power, which we'll talk about next, and the range here, 
This is the slept on overland rig, criminally speaking. One of my absolute favorite features of the F-150, specifically the power booster hybrid, is the standard pro power onboard system. You basically get a 2.4 kilowatt generator slash inverter here included, and that gives you outlets for your normal house outlets, stuff like here. You even have a 240 volt outlet here. So if you wanna power bigger power things, if you wanna power like a fridge or a dryer for your washer and dryer, you could use that from the back of your bed. So if you've got power that's gone out at home, if you need to power a work site, you've got plenty of capability to do that. Or you can upgrade to the 7.2 kilowatt output, and then you can run things like your racing simulator and play Formula One off the back of your F-150. Now, one of the big changes for 2024 was just a subtle refresh to the face, and that really takes shape and fruition in the running lights. They're a little bit more revised, a little bit more flush. Ford wanted to make it look wider and bigger because apparently it's not wide and big enough, but they've done that. It looks almost a little bit more F-250 than F-150 or has in the past. Each trim is also gonna get its own dedicated grill insert or pattern. You've got platinum here across the hood and it's covered in bugs, but the star white metallic looks fantastic in direct sunlight. You've also got chrome recovery hooks down here along with a chromed out lower bumper. We'll come around the side though. We do have new hood garnishes for 2024. So that's a little bit interesting. But here we do have 22, yes, 22 inch wheels on an F-150. They're kind of a combo between a more satin chrome and then a more dedicated gloss chrome. Six lugs, of course. And then you've got your con uh, conventional F-150 fang here. Dipped window. You do have power running boards and power boost signifies that you do get the hybrid. But overall, it's a pretty conventional F-150 shape. They didn't change it too much, but then they did give you new taillights. Again, they kind of fit with the new headlights in that kind of almost F shape over here on the side. But then of course on the bed, blue Ford oval, F-150 stamped in. And again, one of the things that they brought for this year, and I'm a little bummed they didn't include it on our tester, is the swing out gate. There's three different ways that you can swing it out. You've got 37 degrees, which is great for trailers. You're not gonna hit that pole there, or you can open it all the way up to about 100 degrees, which is gonna make it really easy to get stuff into the bed. Of course, here on the Platinum, we do have power all the way down and power all the way up too. You're a new man. I am. You bought a house and changed it up. Bought a job here. I don't know how to feel about it, to be honest. And the technology that you get here in the F-150 is really, really impressive. It starts with your head-up display. It's been reworked for 2024. It's absolutely massive. It shows you a huge amount of information because they've reworked it for Blue Cruise. For 2024, XLT grades and up come standard with the hardware for Blue Cruise as standard. That's your little suite here. And it works really, really well. But you also have a huge fully digital instrument cluster as standard which works really, really well. There's a lot of different animations, loads of different information that you can see in your digital cluster. You move over here into your center screen. This is also standard now, which is fantastic. And it shows you loads of stuff. You've got wireless Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. You've got a split screen functionality so you can see everything from your bed camera to your zone lighting. We've got different apps. Where are they? No features is what I wanna see. We do have power running boards, but your pro power onboard that we saw here, you can track all of that and turn on what modes or what zones of the car you want here. You've also got onboard scales, which works really well for your payload. And it also shows you in your tail lamps, come on, I'll lay a B-roll clip over. It'll show you little graduating dots in your tail lamps, how much you have left towards the max of your bed. You've also got a smart hitch, which you can program to different trailers. And you've got a new record feedback option. So you can record any likes, dislikes, or suggestions about the experiences with your vehicle and then select send. So you can record things about the truck that you either like or dislike, or if you just want to say hi to the random intern monitoring this inbox at Ford, you can send them a little note. Also forgot to mention, you do have a very, very nice 360 camera with a load of different views for trailering, really whatever you could possibly think of. So the tech suite here on the F-150, very, very good. Then we get into the rear seats. It's essentially exactly the same as it was last year. So that means it's huge, it's very practical, and we still have that smoked truffle interior back here with the quilting and everything. Now, interestingly, you think this is the hybrid. Well, they have to put the battery somewhere, and they do, but it's not here in the cabin. You still have plenty of space down here. Totally practical, the seats fold up, really, really nice. So what they've done is they've taken the battery and they've mounted it under the truck between the frame rails. So we'll put this back down and I'll take a seat in here because I'm 6'1". I'm above the national average for height and I have loads of room. I do wish I had a little bit more headroom, but I have this really nice soft headliner because this is the Platinum, 
So it's not that bad when I hit my nub, but I do hit my nub a little bit. We have cup holders, a little dedicated spot for your phone. We do have uh, vents, but no dedicated zone. A little 12 volt here, two level heated seats, no cooled. Don't really expect that from a truck. We do have some USB C's and a house outlet back here as well, but just loads of space, practicality, and with the big panel roof, it's a great place to spend some time. And the cabin experience here on your F-150 Platinum is no less than what you would expect from something wearing the Platinum badge. Your interior is very nice. This is a smoked truffle interior, and it's kind of a two-tone gray and brown. It looks very expensive. It looks very good. You've, of course, got little controls here, platinum designation, quilting for your seats here. The seats do feel like they should come up a little bit more. My shoulders rest a little bit above where they finish. Just a small thing. But you also have heated steering wheel, heated seats, cooled seats, all physical tactility here, huge screens, and the interior really makes sense. You've got this kind of open pour, genuine wood for your upper glove box and onto your door card. You've got Bang & Olufsen speakers down there. And then take a look at this, huge panoramic roof. I don't know how many people are gonna option it, but you can get it, and that's really nice. So there's just loads of nice tactility. Everything's ergonomic and everything makes sense in here. I think the one feature Matt neglected to mention about the seats is you do have massage capable seats. They don't work that great, but at least you have a feature. And one of the last things I want to talk about is the driver assist because Blue Cruise got an upgrade for this year and they've basically reworked the entire lineup to accommodate it. So basically everything I think XLT and up comes hardwired to get the hardware for Blue Cruise. Of course, then you pay for it and blah, blah, blah. But if you want to have it, you can kind of option it and you get eyeball watchers here, here, over there, and it's very, very good. It'll do automatic lane changes for you. It's a great system. Maybe not quite as good as Super Cruise, but it's getting there and it's really good on this big full-size truck. How are you feeling? Bad. How are you? I'm fine. Oh, okay. That must be nice. All right. Well, we are behind the wheel. The F-150 2025 the Platinum. The mighty power boost, the hybrid, which is the most powerful F-150 that isn't a Raptor, mind you. This thing is proper quick. Yeah, when you when you said that, it, it makes a lot of sense because you can feel that it There's has. There's loads of torque in this thing. Now, yes. this is an F-150, so it's not really about speed or performance. It's more about towing and payload. And this being the Platinum, a really nice interior, which it has all of those things, best in class. Uh, towing payload. I will say maybe the Ram Tungsten has a fractionally nicer interior, but it's very close. So I think at 90 grand, it should be really nice. It is, but is it too much money? Yeah, I feel like I personally wouldn't get this trim. I think that the it platinum. is a bit too much money. Yes, the Platinum. Sure. Um, I think that the Lariat offers kind of the ideal balance between features and affordability. So. That starts at 67,000 versus this starts at 76. Yeah. The benefits that you get with the Platinum are like the Bang & Olufsen sound system, rear heated seats, and then also um, Ford Co-Pilot, which is like the blind monitoring, the cross traffic alert, that yeah. sort of thing. So I don't necessarily know if you need all those things in a truck. I think they're <laughs> maybe nice to haves. Yeah. Um, but then the Ram 1500, uh, if you want to look at like a comparable model there, it would be the Laramie, which yeah, is right. $5,000 less. That's yeah. $62,000. So, but that does not have as good of a blue, blue cruise or driver assist feature the system as this does. Very good. And I'm so glad that they brought it's it this year good. because it was one of my favorite, I'd say, features. That yeah, we so this had is Blue Cruise year. like 1.2. It's like an updated system. And I was like, okay, you know, a lot of times manufacturers will say, oh, we've updated the system doesn't really translate, but this is freaking good. It's, it's incredible to have good. on a truck. It's yes. very, very good. And it works really well for something this size, body on frame. Like, I'm really impressed, genuinely impressed. The, when we're talking about price, and this is a very different thing, the, the Raptor buyer versus the, the Platinum buyer, not necessarily the same guy, but it's not like the Raptor is a bad truck. Like, it's still pretty luxurious. I'd argue the ride is better. The interior is a little bit more, enthusiast focus but it's not made of bad materials by any means and this is deep into raptor money like you yeah. can spec out a raptor around mid 80s to ninety thousand dollars with the ecoboost 3 v6 so obviously you don't get the hybrid but you could get the pro power on board the base system like a 2.4 or whatever it is right. you still get some of that with the raptor 
So, I mean, personally, that's where my money would go because the Raptor is freaking awesome. But if you want the most luxed up F-150, this is pretty good. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a good point. I think you do make some sacrifices if you were to get the Raptor versus something sure. like this. But yeah, I think it, to your point, it really depends what you want to do. But I would say Ford has probably the flavor you're looking for. 100%. Yeah, that's that's really the, the moral of the story. For 2024, with the facelift, they did a bunch of internal cleanup of trims and options and like their manufacturing and production. And what it's, what it's kind of culminated as is a more streamlined production, which means they can be more efficient, which means they can do it cheaper, which then translates to you. And that's why you can get the hybrid powertrain here for the same money, because they gave you that $2,000 back, for the same money as the base engine. That's and that's like yeah. the most obvious thing to me, just get the hybrid, because it's super torquey, look, super powerful. It's it great MPG, yeah. 21 on the highway, which is really good in my opinion. Yeah, and what I was seeing on side streets, now obviously it's gonna change if you're on the highway, but on side streets, I was seeing 40, 40% of my driving miles were in electric. Now again, side streets, but yeah. still, that's amazing. And then one other thing I would add to that is, this obviously has your engine cutting off and cutting on again whenever you're like on the highway and stuff. And it's really, really efficient and almost unnoticeable, yeah. honestly. It's really good. It's a very good hybrid system. I think I think Ford gets a lot of credit for this because they deserve it. Yeah. It's a very good truck. Is there anything else that you have? No, that's it. Well, thank you to Ford for letting us have a go in your very good updated 2024 F-150 Power Boost. And we'll see you in the next one. See you next time, guys. Bye.